Well, in case you weren't aware of it, uh, LucasArts released a great game in uh, 1999, late 1999, Indiana Jones and the Inferno Machine. And uh, we're going to go through a little preview here of what, you can, what happens during the game. And take a look at that, and then we'll show you how you can install it on a 64-bit system, because normally you can't. Here's a game that's got everything. Shooting. Rafting. Swimming. And of course, So here's a fun game, uh, we're going to get it installed for you, just follow the instructions uh, coming up. If you don't already have it uh, in your library, uh, you can still get the game. Uh, Amazon has people selling it there. I'm sure you can find some on eBay as well. About 20 bucks isn't bad for the game actually. Uh, you got to be careful you order one for the PC and not for the Nintendo or whatever. This has by far the best graphics of any of the versions. Um, and don't forget, if you get this, it's a copy protected CD, so you can't copy it. Uh, you can only uh, install it, but we're going to help you get through the install procedures now. So here, uh, here I am, I have my CD in, and it comes up and is recognized by the PC. You'll see it down here, disk one. If I go ahead and try and run it here, uh, it's just not going to be able to do it. You're going to get an error message. So if I click on install here, you say, first you want to register, you say no. And it says here, oh, cannot uh, do that. So I'm going to try and bypass this by going and find the setup.exe file itself uh, to do this because it won't run on a 64-bit system. Now, big shout out to a gentleman in uh, Germany who wrote this installer. Uh, you can download over here and it will actually take your installation disk and use it. Let me go ahead and save this here to my hard drive first. Um, and I've already done it, of course, you can see here. I've created a directory for that. But I'm going to save this uh, there and that's going to run the installer uh, to go ahead and install the program from the disk. Uh, which is really a, a great. Now this thing is uh, pretty slow. And by the way, the link to this website is in the description of this video. So when you run the installer, you're going to get a little box that pops up here. And tells you uh, a few things up here and everything. And it's going to have your install path down here, which is a default, which I'm going to change. There's also a, um, a indicator that shows that your DVD is loaded. Sure enough, it is. Uh, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and browse to a different place to go ahead and install mine underneath my game drive, which is my uh, 3 gigabyte drive. And I've already created a directory for it. So there it is. So I can click on Start, and it starts to install. Now let me make this clear. It's maybe because it's a copy-protected disk. It may be because this program is not well written as far as speed goes. It takes a long time, like over a half an hour maybe, to go ahead and do all this. Uh, so you have to be patient here. It doesn't look like it's moving, uh, but it is. But because I'm paranoid, uh, and I couldn't wait for this because it wasn't moving at all, I actually would go out here to my drive, right-click, check properties, and say, oh, look, it's got X number of megabytes, 100 and whatever megabytes. Uh, and then I'd check two minutes later and <laughs> see uh, that it got along a little further. So it proved to me that something was going on, albeit very slow. Now the game is a two disc set, so it, when it got to the end of the first disc, it was asking for the second one. So I went ahead and installed it. And uh, I click on OK here to, uh, uh, once the CD was recognized in the slot, I uh, clicked on OK. The uh, installer went quite a bit faster, OK, on the second CD, because normally on uh, copyrighted games, the second disc is just all the auxiliary files that you need. Uh, and installed it 
uh, quite a bit faster. Take a look here. And it's got 481 uh, megabytes so far. And uh, it finished pretty quickly after this. As with all older games, uh, normally there's been one or two or three, four patches, who knows. Uh, but there's a patch out for uh, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. I think it's 1.2 uh, for it to fix its regular game, pay, game play problems. Uh, so I went out there to get that as well. Uh, this is the installer up there. But just below that is a, uh, a patch. So I went ahead and uh, did the download there after I figured out what this was talking to me in German about. Uh, so I went in and saved this. And I was saved it in the directory uh, where my uh, game that the actual game is located because it's going to run it within that uh, same directory. So after download, I ran it uh, and uh, it came up with a uh, <laughs> we come up with the instructions, which again. I went out to uh, Bing Translator to see uh, what the heck this guy was talking about to make sure I was following the instructions correctly. Uh, you can do the same. Uh, There's really not much to know except put it in your directory and then you, it'll tell you which you can select either 32-bit or 64-bit uh, patch to install. What happened so far is it did the install off the disk onto your hard drive, drive and then it uh, did the patch to update it. but I always go out to this place called Game Copy World. Uh, it's, don't click on anything risky out here. There's a lot of different things they try and shove in your face. But go search for the name of the, the game. They have a lot of CD patches so that you don't have to put the CD in each time. Uh, so that you don't have to go dig it up all the time. Uh, modern standards is you don't have to do all that. And so I go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go here and look for the uh, patch for English. And I'm going to go to the one, there's several different versions usually, like the 1.1 update, a 1.2 update. There's English, French, you know, all these different updates and everything. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this, download the uh, patch number two. And you do, do that here by clicking on the small little icon uh, right there and do the download. Now in CD, we'll be a little careful here because you're going to get some spam trying to be installed. So when this you click on this, it pops up. It goes to a advertising page let's call it and tries to uh, get you to install something so let's do that now it says here mirror one that's fine don't click on any other crap or anything uh, you notice the name of the file is right there in d5 no cd but it goes first to this ad fly and it says download you don't download that that's not what you're looking for you have to wait over in the top right and uh wait for it to come up it'll eventually go the silver warning will eventually go away and say skip ad and that's what you want to click on say skip ad you do not want to download this other stuff then choose a mirror and you'll notice when i click on mirror number one i get the normal download information here and let's go ahead and save it uh there safe to go ahead and do that so now i'm going to go ahead and put that in the same directory uh, on my game drive Like I said earlier, what game copy rules do, they, they download it, you extract it, and you put this file to replace the one in your in your uh, directory that r normally runs your game. Now, I usually name the exe uh, that was there uh, already to old or something else so that I, I can have the original in case something goes wrong. But then I go back to the no CD uh, directory here and copy it into the main directory. Now that we're installed and have all the patches, we're going to go ahead and run the uh, run the game. But you notice here there's a section down here that says Options. And, of course, you can't register online anymore. But if I do click Sound Options, you notice it, does, it crashes without saying anything. So I'm going to go ahead and run it again and see if I can do some other options before I get into the game. And I go to Options, and I go here to Advance and Display Options. And again, it doesn't work either. So let's show you how to get past that. So first, we're going to go ahead and start the game. Okay. Now, if we say start the game, it'll fire up fine, hopefully. Unless it says no disk in, ignore that if you have got the patch in or just click past it. So the first time in, you might see your game look something like this. Uh, very narrow and all that. But we're going to go ahead and show you how to uh, go ahead and set up your settings uh, to be completely widescreen. 
Now in this next part, uh, you're going to see it actually already in widescreen because I've already made the adjustments. Uh, but we're going to go through this intro. The only thing uh, bad about this is that you sometimes you have to sit through the demo. Hit the escape key here to get, uh, get past all of this, uh, this stuff so you can get right to the game. So once you're in the game, uh, you can hit the escape key to access all the conf all your stuff, your pre treasures and all this other stuff, your stuff. But you can go here over here and uh, besides saving games, you can go up here to gameplay options and here's your control options and there's your display options. So you hit that and this little pop-up comes up and you can change this to the resolution. I find 1280 by 1024 worked good with my 1920 by uh, whatever uh, monitor. So uh, you can maybe start with that one. And also I changed it from 64-bit to 32-bit. And I also went over here to advanced and clicked on that. And by the way, because our systems are so much faster than 1999, you can change these to be like crazy fast uh, they, and it'd be just fine. Uh, so you can have those uh, settings in your monitor will refresh and you should see it like I see it here. So sound settings, a few other things that you can investigate yourself. One more setup thing uh, to look at is how to, uh, your controller. Right now it's set up to use the arrow keys to move around. So we're going to change that. We'll go all the way over here again and go over here to where you see the, one more, control options, hit enter. It has a whole bunch of default ones already done, and plus enabling mouse. By the way, turn off enabling mouse. It just gets in your way. Um, but you can create your own by clicking on new control set. I created one that I called OGG. And uh, let's go to edit it to show you. You can't edit the default ones. But I changed it from the arrow keys to the modern uh, assignments of WSAD. And you do that by highlighting something over there. Come over to the... Uh, Oh, any one of these, by the way, can be modified. Uh, but all you do is you select one, and then you click on the Edit Assignment button in order to uh, go ahead and uh, edit that. So there you have it, uh, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. Uh, I'm sure you're going to get hours of enjoyment out of it. Uh, I so far uh, have just been playing it a couple days again. It's been years. I've forgotten most of everything there was to do. And that's why I want to give a shout out now. And on YouTube, uh, help me get through uh, the game. I've forgotten how to get to do same, some things and uh, figure out some puzzles. Uh, he's only got about uh, 30, 40 views, so uh, go take a look and uh, give him a like. So there you have it, the uh, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine on a 64-bit modern system. I hope you enjoy it.